like maybe you've heard from some of your classmates or uh, to your younger brothers and sisters about some of the other sessions. And I'm really excited. This is the first persuasive writing made easy that I'm going to be presenting to your school. So you get the very unique presentation. I'm really excited to hear about your projects. And I would love to maybe hear a few people's projects, what they are. But first, I want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Doris Sweetop, and the reason I'm speaking here about writing, and I'm 14 years old, and coming all the way from Seattle over video conferencing, is due to my love of writing. I published my first book, Flying Fingers, when I was seven, and then my second book, Dancing Fingers, I co-authored with my sister Adriana, who's turning 16 today, and I wrote this with her. So I really love writing of all kinds, but one thing you might notice is that both of these are, well, one is, short stories and one is poetry, so the first one's technically fiction, and I also really love to do non-fiction writing, persuasive, expository, I do a lot of blog posts and other things, so I highly encourage you, if you're scared of writing persuasively or if the word essay just really frightens you, that it's really not all that bad, and as you grow older you're going to be using essays and non-fiction writing, persuasive writing a lot more in your everyday life. But in fact, we actually do use persuasive writing a lot in our everyday life, and I'll be going over some of those ways. But first, I want to ask, what is persuasive writing? Anyone want to give a definition? What is persuasive writing? Jackie? Very good. Yeah, writing is where you're writing to persuade. It could be your other students, as in the, what you're working on. It could be the entire country. Like, there's the um, big election starting to heat up now. So, what are some, what, what are you trying to do in persuasive writing? That's answered pretty clearly by what it is. You're trying to persuade. More specifically, in persuasive writing, a writer takes a position for or against an issue and tries to convince the reader to believe or do something. So, I believe that the city park should be pet friendly versus no, the city park should not be pet friendly. But how many of you have ever argued, if you have siblings, how many of you have ever argued with a sibling? Raise your hand. Okay, looks like pretty much everybody who has a sibling has. I would be very surprised if there are any perfect little youngsters out there. Well, if you've ever argued with a sibling, you know that it can be really difficult to win an argument just by saying, no, I didn't, yes, you did, you did, no, I didn't. That's really difficult, isn't it? Because not, you know, you're just going back and forth and saying, yes, no, no, yes, and it doesn't work out so well. So in persuasive writing, you want to be a little different. You want to strategize, you want to support your arguments with details. So instead of, no, you didn't, I did, or... I didn't you did, it would become, uh, I know that you stole the cookies from the cupboard because your greasy fingerprints all are all over the cookie jar, you were working with oil so there's grease now all over it, plus you always have a habit of taking two cookies, whereas I only take one, and suspiciously two cookies were taken out of the cookie jar. And that's what you call back with your argument with evidence. So. Where do you see some examples of persuasive writing in everyday life? Where do you see persuasive writing in everyday life? Definitely, you might see it in two books where two characters are having an argument, right? A very creative way of thinking of it. Where are some other places we see persuasive writing? Magazines. Magazines, definitely. So, actually, it's great that you mentioned that because I was looking through Newsweek magazine looking for some advertisements, and so I found this Duracell battery advertisement, I found this advertisement for tourism to Thailand, and I found an advertisement for this um, new HP inkjet printer. And it's a little difficult to see, so I put them up on here. Oh, let's see, here is the Duracell one. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So basically it says, today's smart lights aren't big and heavy, just brighter. And over here it says, Duracell Daylight Flashlights. 20 times brighter, pure white LED light. Efficiency engineered, or 5 times battery life. Designed for AA or AAA batteries. Patented, uh, patented true beam optics. Smart power illuminated, Duracell Smart Power. So when you look at this advertisement, you realize that the strategies they're using aren't all that different. They're trying to deliver you this message 
that this light is something, or that this daylight flashlight is something you should buy, and it's giving these details or these reasons to back their argument up. So you can think about making your persuasive argument basically have those same things. You have some main point you're trying to get across, and you have the reasons that you need to back it up. So next time you're looking at advertisements, you can, you, if you just have a desire to look at advertisements, you can tell your parents, hey, I'm studying this persuasive writing, which is pretty true. What about if you ever tried to get your parents to let you stay up later? Maybe you said something like, you should let me stay up later, because I'm older now, I don't need as much sleep, I'll be happier and less grumpy about going to sleep, and if I go to sleep now, I'll just read anyway. And all my friends' parents let them go to bed way later than me. So you see that same thing happening, where you have this main point that you're trying to get across, you should let me stay up later, and then all these supporting details that help support that main point. So, let's look at, like, um, here's another example, where you should elect me as city parks commissioner because I am for pet-friendly parks, I'm tough on littering, and I love the great outdoors. And finally, here's this ad for Thailand, or tourism to Thailand, and what is the purpose of this advertising, you might ask, and that's to attract people to visit Thailand to bring money, you know, obviously as tourists. So, analyzing the purpose of a persuasive argument allows you to find its main point, which is you should visit Thailand. And that has all these details about how beautiful Thailand is. So, uh, it says that, let me read it down here, it's a little hard on the board. It says, set your sights on Thailand. It is at the crossroads of trading and business in emerging Asia, a creative economy that grows from strength to strength with bright prospects, stunning attractions, and dynamic experiences. Thailand, now shining before your eyes. So obviously using this really big compelling image helps a lot. And you might ask, well, how do I do that in writing? These advertisements have the benefit of these big images and flashy logos. You can't do that in writing. Well, the thing is that you actually can. In your persuasive writing, you want to make sure that you're not just listing off facts. You're not just saying, Thailand is pretty awesome, and here are some reasons why. Because there's a lot of trade going on. Because there's this and this. In this one, they really create an image. They use language that is very beautiful. So in your persuasive argument, even though you're going to be dealing with a lot of facts and a lot of science, you want to make sure that it's still something people are really going to want to read. So looking at advertisements and thinking of other persuasive arguments that you might have made can really help. Who here asked their parent for something, maybe it was a gift this time of the season, or maybe um, you, want, you just want, really wanted something, maybe a new video game? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Ask your parents, beg your parents for something. I've seen a lot of raised hands. Okay, keep those hands on. What kind of persuasive argument do you use? How do you try to get your parents to give you that? Anybody? Yes. Okay, so for the staying up way later, all my friends stay way later, using that kind of bandwagon appeal, that's when you're saying, well, everybody else is doing it and trying to convince people that way. What are some other persuasive arguments uh, that you made? Maybe it was for a product, maybe it was to do something like stay up later. What are some other persuasive arguments? Uh, yeah, well, there's a video game I really wanted, and so we went to go get it, and my dad said it was for Christmas, and I wanted it earlier, and so I just said, how about that, make a deal, and I'll do this and this, and I can get the game, and then uh, play it a, a bit, and then it'll count as an early Christmas present. Okay, so you basically, you were again laying out the reasons, hey, if you let me play this early, then I will do all these things for you, and you won't have to give me another present because it'll be like an early Christmas present. Yeah, definitely. That is an example of a persuasive argument. So you guys, what are some more? Let's get one more. Uh, yeah, you get
I didn't quite hear that. Like I heard the very okay, let me, Yeah. Okay, so it had to do with the cell phone. You, um, the uh, she has to pass for a cell phone because everyone else had one, and because she was starting to become further and further away from her parents. And right, Jen. Okay. Great. So yeah, this big cell phone. Are you okay? By the way, if you feel bad about not having a cell phone, or everyone else does, I'm a 14-year-old girl who doesn't have a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I walk home from school as well. So you'd say the danger is ever present. Oh well. But yeah, definitely. These are great ways to <laughs> to convince. I know I can be kidnapped at home. Um, no, my parents. Are you are being persuasive now, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Is, I, is I, your I, mom I, in the room? Yes, she is. If I wanted to persuade her to give me a cell phone, okay, mom, I have to walk a long way home from school. <laughs> Plus, there's a lot of cars and students who parked on the side of the road that you never know if they're kidnappers. And since I'm going to more things without you guys, then I should definitely have a cell phone to in touch and all the miscommunication that's happening because we don't have a cell phone is really wearing us all thin. So yeah, you can definitely work that persuasive argument, right, with the cell phones. Safety, that's always something parents go for. And um, what, what else? Good communication because your parents are probably a little tired of maybe you having a call from a school phone or borrow someone else's phone. That could definitely wear down people. So safety, ease, ease of communications, keeping up with the times. Maybe you could say, if I don't have a cell phone, I'm not really in with the 21st century. You have to be accepting of change. That will work on some parents, maybe not so much on others. So when you craft a persuasive argument, you might have noticed one of the things I did there was I thought about what do my parents care about. My parents care about my safety. So I'm going to tweak my cell phone argument. Maybe the reasons I want a cell phone are really because, oh, the cell phones are really cool, and because I want to be able to text all my friends. But the reasons they would want a cell phone would be so that I don't get kidnapped and I have you know, all my phone with me and I can communicate with them. So I am tweaking my argument to really fit my audience. As you're writing your persuasive arguments, you really want to think about your audience all the time. What do my audience want? What do they want to see in my project? How can I emphasize those things that they care about and I may, might not spend as much time on the things they don't. So we'll talk about that a little more with the know your audience bit. Let's practice writing our own persuasive argument. How could we convince people to buy our imaginary product, the MySky personal transport jetpack? So yeah, I know jetpacks are not super advanced right now, but let's say that this new jetpack has come along and we need to make sort of an advertisement, almost like an infomercial advertisement, a full page magazine spread about this jetpack. So what we know is that it can climb up to 2,000 feet. That's pretty high. That's almost as high as the tallest building in the world. It can go up to 90 miles per hour. There's two giant parachutes included. Costs $5 million, so pretty expensive. Fuel for the jetpack costs $80 per gallon. And the jetpack averages 10 miles per gallon. So a 90 mile trip would cost you $720. Now, these are all different things that we know about the jetpack, and as we go through the presentation, we're picking up new things about how to make persuasive arguments, you can start thinking, how can you craft this argument to best fit the audience? So how can we craft this persuasive argument for a jetpack that would make people want to buy it? Well, tip number one would be to know your audience. I talked a little bit about how I changed my cell phone approach because I knew my mom was the audience. The audience will be the person or people who will read your writing. So in your case, the audience is your fellow students, right? Yes. 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 Or, or listen to or read, yes. Okay. So what are some things that you know your fellow students are going to be looking for in your argument? Okay. Yeah, of course. Cost. Yeah, they want the cost to be low, so not having to pay a whole big amount. What else? What are some of the other things they're looking for in the project? They want the item to be something they actually need, not just like a special spray that can bounce stuff. Yeah, it can't just be like a nice decoration for the house, right? It has to actually be something that is useful. So thinking of these different things that they're looking for, cost, need, anything else? No. Um, like how fast you will go. Speed? Oh, interesting. Okay. Speed. 
writing to an audience of Jetpack experts, it would be like, hey, this, you give us some more details. So depending on your audience, you need to know which approach to take. So how are we going to provide a nice guy Jetpack? Well, we know that there's all this information that we have. These are the different facts. And then this is our audience. They often sit through a lot of traffic on the commute. So we've done some of this traffic research. They're 21 to 35 years old and an audience of Cool Transportation Magazine. That's where it's out of the place, is Cool Transportation Magazine. They're frugal, so generally not spending too much money, or don't like to spend too much money, and don't necessarily have science backgrounds. So we could use all this information about our audience to our benefit. So how, take one of these things, how might it help us? Well, if they often sit through a lot of traffic, you can tell them that there isn't much traffic in the sky, so it will be faster. There's no traffic in the sky, very nice. I think we just got our new slogan, right? There's no traffic in the sky, you can just jump over the big line of cars stretch out over the highway and go 90 miles per hour, which is faster than you'd be allowed to on the highway, and speed out to your destination. Now, how might one of these things kind of hurt our argument or provide a challenge? Since they generally don't spend a lot of money, they won't be willing to spend $5 million on one jetpack. Exactly. Since they're a frugal bunch, they don't generally spend a whole lot of money, then this would, this $5 million jetpack would seem like a really expensive purchase. So how do we deal with both the challenges and the benefits of working with this audience? That's something that we're going to have to do with a really well-crafted, persuasive argument. So again, in the facts that we have, we have some really compelling ones that would make the audience uh, say, I'm not going to buy this jetpack. It costs, not only does it cost $5 million, I'm going to have to keep paying for this really expensive fuel, which is going to really add up every trip I take. But how might we use some of this stuff over here? Oops, wow, give me the entire slide. Okay. We can use some of the stuff like you can climb up to 2,000 feet, go up to 90 miles per hour, when two giant parachutes are included. Another thing that I didn't mention in the audience background is that if they're reading something like Cool Transportation Magazine, they're probably automatically interested in cool transportation. So maybe mentioning the cool factor and how revolutionary it is, etc. might help. So, I'm going to open up a Word document and we're going to work on this MySky advertisement together. And we're going to try to create the best persuasive argument in this advertisement we possibly can. So, we have the MySky Jetpack. The MySky Jetpack. It's not the limit, it's MySky. Yeah, that was a bit. Okay, so MySky is, when you're making your persuasive argument, you can often start with sort of a main point and then an overview of some of the details you're going to expand on later. So, the MySky Jetpack is, what are three words that describe it and make it really appealing? Three words? Fast. Fast. Great. What else? Amazing. What was that? Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So one thing to remember is that, so what these things are, fast, amazing, we're going to be expanding on them later. So we're going to have to support the fast and we're going to give our data. And for amazing, we'll also have to support that, so make sure to give words that we can back up with our facts. Okay, it's fast, it's amazing. What is the third one? Easy. Easy? All right, so easy to use. Great. So my sky is fast, amazing, and easy to use. So now we're going to add more about each one of these. And the main point, even though we're not putting it at the top like you would with a paper, we're not putting our thesis statement right at the top and saying you should buy the MySky Jetpack because this is essentially the same approach we're taking. We have like our three details that we're supporting with um, more details or reasons. So, fast. We could use, again, that amazing slogan, there's no track for this guy. MySky is fast. There's no traffic in the sky and our 90 mile per hour jetpack lets you get 
sky high above the above the um above the what? Traffic. Traffic. A above the traffic. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Traffic. Change. Cool. So we have it goes 90 miles per hour, and that it can get you out of traffic. So we're using what we know about our audience having to be stuck in traffic a lot, and we're using that to our advantage. Amazing. What are some things that help support our claim that my sky is amazing? What do you think makes this jetpack amazing? Uh, it's adorable. It's sorry? It's adorable. It's adorable? Dur durable. Oh, durable. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, okay. that was the first time I heard a jetpack being called adorable. I thought. Oh, right, durable. Yes, definitely. The jetpack is durable, so it can weather a lot. All right, sure. What are some other things that make it amazing? So I can go back to what we know. Um, so we know we can climb up to 2,000 feet, 90 miles per hour, two giant parachutes, $5 million. So think of how we might use some of these facts to our advantage. Amazing, it's durable. It gives the I'm sorry? It gives the ability to people to go most Okay, it gives you the ability to go places you can. And my sky is easy to use. What would help support our easy to use? The new fuel. The sorry? New fuel. New fuel, okay. Our revolutionary new fuel means that you don't have to worry about or accidents. So maybe it's instead of like a really hot fuel, my dad suggested that it could somehow be um, like a cold fuel. I don't know exactly how that worked, but all right, let's say that it means you don't have to worry about explosions or accidents. It's not so explosive. And, um, and it lets you get where you want to faster. All right, now what is another thing? How, we've, so we've got the 90 miles per hour, 2,000 feet in the air, cool new fuel. What about the parachutes? How do you think the parachutes could be used, possibly? Great. I'm sorry? They make it a lot safer. They make it a lot safer, yeah. So, we can definitely include this as another argument. Plus, it's safe because we have the two parachutes included. So if you know one fails, and you have the other one as well. Not that you'd want to imply anything could fail in your beautiful, perfect jet path, right? But this would be a good argument um, to add on. Now, again, because we know our audience is more interested probably in the coolness of it than the safety, this wouldn't be one of our top arguments. But we, it's probably worth throwing in there. So, plus it's. Safe with two giant parachutes included with each jetpack. Okay, so, and then we include what the fake website I fly high with mysky.com just because I couldn't resist rhyming that many words. And we have our argument. So, if you look at this, it's structured pretty much like a argument that you might use for anything. And that's that you have your main point, which is essentially you should buy this MySky jetpack because it's laying out everything that's great about it. MySky is fast, amazing, and easy to use. Now, how are we going to support that? Because people aren't going to look at this and say, oh, I trust you automatically. I'm just going to buy this for $5 million and assume that it's fast, amazing, and easy to use. You want more information. So you add details. You support each of these claims. MySky is fast 
with more details. There's no traffic in the sky and our 90 mile per hour jet pack lets you fly high above the traffic jam, so we're providing you another detailer. My sky is amazing. It gives you the ability to go places you can up to 2,000 feet in the air. My sky is easy to use. Our revolutionary new fuel means that you don't have to worry about explosions or accidents and it lets you get where you want to faster. Plus, it's safe with two giant parachutes included with each jetpack. If you want, you could even probably add more to that. You could add more about how cool it makes you look or how it will make a perfect gift for a loved one this holiday season. Yeah, that would be a very expensive gift, um, opening up your brand new jetpack, but I'm sure somebody would do it. So you could have all these different arguments you would add on, and they all help support your central point by my sky jetpack. So what is your central point with your project? What? You want to look at your own project and the main point you want to bring to your group? Okay, great. really awesome. I think I would definitely be interested in purchasing it for Bill. So you are taking the water filtration system and adding the flavoring component, is that right? Okay, yeah. so how um, so how are you supporting this? How are you trying to approach your argument? I only caught like one word, sorry. Let me, let me just, I'll, I'll, he, he's, um, his, his central idea is that we can take any kind of water, kind of make it not only great tasting, but healthy for you. And he believes that people will, will want that because they, they like good tasting water, right? Yep. Okay, great. So you're, so if someone was like, oh, well, I don't need flavored water, that's just, an add-on, you know, then you could be like, well, maybe people will drink more water when they like the taste of it, and that's healthy, that'll keep people from getting dehydrated, definitely. So you could address that argument with some arguments of your own. Great, so when you think about it, imagine this kind of imaginary opponent standing here. So, writing about the My Sky Jetpack, we thought, well, these are people who don't want to spend $5 million, and they're like, $5 million is really expensive, so we countered that with, oh, but look how cool and amazing and fast it is. And so as you're thinking of your own arguments, make sure to imagine the questions and problems that people will pose to you. So if they're reading this about flavored water, and they're asking, well, do we really need flavored water, and how much will this cost, and all these other questions, think of your own arguments uh, back to them. All right, anyone else want to tell me what is your project, and how are you supporting it? project is you get an app in your phone, and it, like, and it tells you if there's a fire in the house, tells you where to escape successfully. And um, it's, I'm persuading people to buy it because if... No, 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 don't. Okay, so did you hear the... Yes, the I did. Okay. So... Another good one for you. I'm sorry? You can use that one too. Yeah. That would be good for your phone. The... So the, if, if there's a fire in the house and it tells you where to escape, that is definitely something that it's difficult to argue why you need that. That is definitely a very necessary thing. Now, what are what would you say if somebody's like, well, does it cost too much or something like that? How do you argue against it? I'm because I would say why pay money to save lives. And um, because, it could, yeah, it could save All right, so you would say it's worth paying money to save lives. Great, and that's very hard to argue with. Whenever you pull an argument like that, that has anything that is really, you can't argue with that morally. Like you can't say, oh, I wouldn't pay money to save people's lives. Nobody's going to say that. So you can definitely use an argument like that. Now, does anyone else, let's hear about one more project and how you're supporting it with your persuasive arguments. Very sadly. Okay, 
this, you make a swim shirt and it changes colors as what happens? It's shiny when it does um, it changes color under the ultraviolet rays from the sun. Oh nice. So your swimsuit changes color under UV rays. And now what so what would you say is the purpose of it? Not only does it look really cool, but also when it changes color, you'll know to put on sunscreen. Wonderful. Okay, so now, what would be an argument someone might have against that? Does it cost a lot, or what do you think someone might say if they were against your product? Great. So you have the swimsuit. What is something that someone might say badly about it? Like, oh, well, it's Kids are just going to buy it for the cool colors. They won't actually pay attention to the to to whether they need to put on sunscreen. Like if somebody had an argument like that, how would you counter it? How would you come up with an argument of your own? So maybe you would really educate about the dangers of sunburn as well. So okay, that sounds good. So when you're making your persuasive argument, remember that your product, of course, you'll think that it's the greatest thing ever. But from another student's standpoint, they might not know a lot about it. They might be evaluating you against other people and really having a lot of these questions, a lot of these arguments come up as they're reading your arguments. So making yourself a really soundproof argument is, or not soundproof, sorry, um, question proof argument is a good thing to do. So, Remember to really know your audience, tackle your different points thinking about the audience. So we included the things that we knew would appeal to the readers of cool transportation and try to make the benefits outweigh the cons of paying $5 million. And with your own project, you want to do the same. You know that there are probably things that your project might, where people might say, well, is that really as necessary? Is this really as important, and people are going to ask those questions, so being able to answer them, being able to come up with an argument back at them is super important. All right, well, you guys have done an absolutely wonderful job with persuasive writing. I really enjoyed hearing about your projects. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Okay, Um, What grade are you in? I'm in 10th grade, a uh, sophomore. I skipped a couple of grades, though, so that's why I'm in 14. Yes. What school do you go to? Well, I actually go to two schools. I take my online classes at Washington Virtual Academy, which is an online public school, and I take um, two of my classes as well at Redmond High School. Uh, what do you like to do on your free time? Not, not including writing books. What do I like to do in my free time? Not including writing books. No, writing books is all I do. No, I'm joking. Uh, I, that's something actually that people think a lot about writers is that all you do is you are cooped up inside an office and you're writing, but I love to do so much when I go outside when it's not rainy because, you know, near Seattle it's super rainy a lot. Well, uh, hiking, camping, um, actually, sorry, not camping, I'm getting hiking in. Hiking and biking uh, out in the great outdoors. I love doing that. Cooking is pretty fun, drawing, painting, uh, art is a huge interest, and reading, of course. Do you play any sports? I don't really, I'm unfortunately not the most athletic person you'll meet. That is one stereotype. Another stereotype about writers that might be true is that you spend a lot of time uh, not playing sports. Yeah, I, I've i never really been on like a ball team or of any kind, actually. I Most of the sports that I'm able to do are really individual ones, like riding a bike. And even that, I sort of fail at that sometimes. That's okay. Lisa? Where do I get the inspirations for writing books? Well, lots of different places. A lot of times from the people I know. So when I was writing this diary of a preteen short story in my book, Flying Fingers, I based this older sister character a little bit off my older sister. But she's still really mad at me about that because the older sister character is the villain in the book. So I don't think she's quite forgiving me. But definitely pulling really? inspirations from me a lot. Sorry. Really? Um, 
See, he's asking, do you draw? Yeah, I do draw, although I wish I were a lot better and I want to continue improving my art skills so that I can maybe illustrate my own books. Well, thank you so very much for doing this persuasive writing. Remember that persuasive writing isn't as hard as it's cracked up to be. You make persuasive arguments every day to your sisters and brothers, to your parents, to your teachers. So just take the skills that you already have and put them down on paper. Thank Thanks. Well, Dora, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful week. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. I appreciate it. Uh, please look for my email, and um, I will be uh, in touch. And hopefully you have a wonderful uh, holiday season and a new year. Thank you very much. See you, too. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.